Welcome once again, everybody, to Blockbuster Mentality. I'm your host, Ben. Got another great show for you folks. Before we get started, make sure you're subscribed to us on iTunes. Be sure to rate and review us. We'd really appreciate that. Subscribe to us on YouTube as well as we're trying to revamp that channel. And follow us on Instagram at Blockbuster Mentality and Twitter at Blockbuster Cast. That's where you'll get updates on all the shows. Uh, we have a great show today. Talk to comedian Greg Fitzsimmons uh, on the 1982 classic coming of age comedy, high school comedy, fast times at Ridgemont High. Sean Penn's in it, Judge Reinhold. And yeah, we had a great uh, conversation about it. Talked about sports. You're going to hear it. You're going to hear it in a second. So I don't want to spoil anything. One thing I didn't mention uh, in, the, in the episode to, to him is that this movie always reminds me of going to Pistons games uh, in the early 2000s. I actually went to a lot uh, for some reason. Um, <laughs> probably because the tickets were so cheap. But anyways, they had a player named Rip Hamilton, Richard Hamilton. Anytime he made a big play, they would uh, play the Spicoli uh, sound bit and a uh, little video on the uh, scoreboard that would say, all right, Hamilton. And that's what this movie always reminds me of is my Detroit Pistons. So little fun fact for you there but uh, uh you can uh just search greg fitzsimmons on google on twitter on instagram he's gonna say what shows he has and everything in the episode but uh, he's got a lot of good podcast podcasts out there and uh he's a funny guy and nice guy and uh here is my conversation with him on fast times at bridgemont high Located, by the way. I'm in Tampa, Florida. Wow, wow, man. What a fucking sports year for you guys. I know, dude. Damn. It's been, oh, I Because I, you know, I'm from Detroit originally, so I always had the Red Wings at least, you know, through my childhood and everything. And then the Pistons got better in the early 2000s, but then I moved down here. And yeah, it was uh, moved down here, I think, the year they Lightning won it uh, the first time in 04. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it was, it was quite exciting and I've always yeah. been, a Bra I've always been a Brady guy. So, uh, you know, I picked it when they traded him. I bet my friend, I do a podcast with my friend and I bet him at the beginning of the season. I said, I will bet you on every single Bucks game this year. I got the Bucks, no points. Yeah. And, uh, and I, no, no, no. I gave him the points, gave him the points. Yeah. And I still came out $400 up for the year. Nice. Yeah. yeah I knew they were I knew they were going to the Super Bowl. I didn't think they'd win it. Yeah. I mean it's it's classic Brady. They he's a little shaky during the season and then, you know, yeah. he just turns it on in the playoffs, you know? Yeah. Beats two teams he lost to before, the Saints and the Chiefs and the uh I think there was another team there. But uh but yeah, it was great. Great, great yeah. year for Tampa sports. It's the armpit yeah. of America, but we got that going. I was gonna for say, us. but you're still Tampa. <laughs> exactly. Are you an uh LA fan or I see you're from New York. Are you more New York guy? Um, you know, I'm a big sports fan, but I'm not a team guy. Nah. I like watching good games. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, look, I get excited if um you know, honestly. I can't think of a team that I get that excited about. It was it was the uh, Buccaneers a little bit until until Brady took that million dollar PPP uh, <laughs> loan, and I was like, "Fuck this guy!" Yeah, <laughs> and I saw what a Trump supporter he was, and then I kind of turned on him halfway through the season. Yeah, I know. I, I've just always been biased because I'm uh, you know a Michigan fan, and he played for Michigan, so you know. Kind of followed him around, and hey, he wins games, you know. Politics aside, <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's 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 been crazy with uh, you know all the, all this COVID stuff. I do like to ask comedians, you know, uh, has the situation we're in helped your material or has it hurt it? <laughs> um, it's funny you ask because I was just in. Well, I was in Tampa in the fall and uh 
and I found that people were into it. And then I was just in, where was I last week? <laughs> Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, I hear comedians go, oh, I'm not going to talk about COVID. Nobody wants to hear about that. They want to escape from that. You know, so many comedians make these declarations that they've figured out in their heads based on some fucking, you know, genius strategy that they possess. And yeah. it's like, no, go in the, the clubs and have the balls to try the material and then tell me, if, you know what? People loved it. It was the best. The best 10 minutes of my set every night was when I was talking about COVID. Yeah, I mean, that's what's on people's minds. Sure, yeah, they they want to escape, but it's all about the, you know, the observation and, you know, what you're seeing. And, you know, it's like, ah, huh, that's funny because it's true uh, type of thing. Yeah. So you got to go with your gut, I think, you know, it's just. Yeah, you know, and you got to take it. a risk. Yeah, take exactly. Take a risk. Exactly. Man, Raleigh, nice. Um, what, oh, look at this, by the way. See this coffee cup I'm drinking from? Oh, Ebor, look at you. Nice. The Bricks. It's this really cool skateboard shop that I used to go to when I was uh, in Tampa. Yeah. Now, are, are, do you still ever talk to Mike Kelta? Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Love Mike Kelta. Yeah. He's, I uh, came down. Um, he was, when he was officially changing his name from Cowhead to Kelta, he uh, decided to roast himself. So he invited down some comics. And we all came down. This was probably six or seven years ago. And it was me, Jim Norton, Bobby Kelly, Jim Florentine. Um, somebody else big. There was another big name. We all came what? down for free just, just to celebrate his changing his yeah, name. Was, wasn't it Ralphie or, or uh, Burt Kreischer maybe? Yeah, oh, Kreischer. Yeah, yeah, Kreischer was yeah. here too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I I I think I remember catching some of it, but yeah, that's, I, I think that's, uh, kind of how I discovered you too, was, uh, was through him. So, you know, Oh, that's uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So you said uh, you, do you play guitar? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You, you play the epiphany, obviously the, uh, I play the epiphany. <laughs> that's my son's guitar. I like yeah. to play acoustic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, He's I'm got more the electric of a, guitar. Yeah, I'm more of an acoustic guy myself. But uh, yeah, yeah I, during the quarantine, I treated myself to an amp and, and a, an electric guitar. You know, just to just to play around with. So you know, to annoy your who do you live with? Uh, my uh, my my wife and, and my three my three little ones. So you got three kids. Look I at you. I do. I know, man. It's uh, exceeding the two child norm <laughs> in this country. Yep, we were done with two, and then uh, and then number three uh, just kind of snuck in there. I don't know how that happens, but uh, um, you had sex with your wife. Oh, well, yeah. Well, news to me. News to me. Do you know the night that you got pregnant? Were you able to like pinpoint it? I think so. Yeah, and uh, it was alcohol was certainly involved um but yeah yeah and it was just like what what were what were we thinking but hey we had we had two boys so this time it was a daughter so we got the girl so you know it it, it all worked out in the end you know it's hey three healthy kids man that's a that, blessing that's right that's right it's what it's all about um now you have uh, how many podcasts are you on like 60 61 62 now oh yeah. wow wow yeah um, no, I have uh, my original one called Fitz Dog Radio that I've been doing for like, I think it's like 12 years now. And then I started one about two years ago with Allison Rosen called Childish, where I talk about my teenage kids and she talks about her babies. And then I have one with Mike Gibbons, who's been my buddy since college. Oh, wow. And it's called Sunday Papers. And we go through the news every Sunday. That's kind of my favorite one right now, just because uh, Mike and I uh, are best friends. We were each other's best mans and in, in, in our weddings, and yeah. uh, so we just have a lot of fun every it, Sunday. Yeah, just yeah, it's sh shooting the shit with your buddy. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's what yeah. it's, yeah, that's what it's, what it's all about. You know, I, uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I started this podcast was just having a buddy. We always talked about movies. It's like, Hey, why don't we record this? Everyone else is doing a podcast, but, uh, then he left me and here I am, you know, all alone. Jesus. You know? Wow. I bet he's <laughs> kicking himself. I know. I know. But, uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah. So on this show, we like to, uh, you know, uh, have 
someone on who's uh, prominent in the uh, you know film world, comedy world, you know that type of thing, who has a following because it gives their fans a chance to see what they uh, think about a certain movie. It gives them a different perspective of how they you know how they see this piece of art uh the the film you chose uh fast times at ridgemont high uh now first of all i have to ask well, why this movie this i think this was the first one you threw out there uh why why'd you pick this film um i think there's been a lot of coming of age movies you know high school coming of age movies and i think that that's uh, just such a ripe emotional period to tackle as a writer director and um, Cameron Crowe, if you don't know this, went underground. He went, he went into a uh, high school in San Diego. And he, I guess he looked young. And he was able to pretend he was a high school student for, I don't know how long, a year. Yeah. And he just collected characters and stories. And I just feel like there's been, you know, there, there was... Um, uh, what was the one? Uh, almost famous or, or not almost famous? No, the other high school one. Oh, high school. Uh, I forget, but yeah, I just feel like this one moves me through every moment. Every one of these characters, I felt like connected to not a broad one-dimensional stereotype, but but like really layers of what kids are going through in terms of not feeling like they're on the inside. It's all about who's inside and who's outside. Sure. And, yeah. And I, I just think he really captured that. And um, I, can, I, I can just watch it again and again. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is one of those movies. And it, it, it's so surprising to me, I guess maybe because he wanted to be more modern, because I'm not sure how old he was when he did the whole undercover thing. Um, you know, I was surprised that he just didn't go off his own actual high school experience, but uh, he actually <laughs> went undercover, which, yeah, is insane to me that they allowed him to do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, he probably seemed younger than a lot of the actors they choose for, you know, for high school films. Usually it's like, it's not as bad as Greece. Usually, you know, Greece, you, yeah. you, know, you got these like 40 year olds playing high school people, but yeah, uh, right. th this was a, a more believable. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, you know, full of these, uh, full of these great characters and great moments, uh, iconic moments, uh, you know, and I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, you know, coming of age and everything. Thing. um but uh but yeah i'm definitely surprised that uh yeah that <laughs> this the story behind this is insane um and it's directed uh, by amy heckerling um who went on to do uh she did like oh that's right i was thinking cameron crowe directed it but yeah she did i forgot yeah, he just wrote it yeah he wrote it yep and uh yeah she went on to do i think clueless uh the 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 look who's talking <laughs> movies um wow. but uh but yeah it's uh you know, early 80s, you know, kind of raunchy teen comedy for some reason. I, you know, you don't think female director, but yeah, it was great to see that. Uh, but I think I think that might have been like her first movie. Yeah, yeah. I and think, I uh, think it might have been Cameron Crowe's first movie. And I think it was the first movie for um, a lot of the cast. I mean, you know, I, I don't I don't remember. So I think Sean Penn had already done Bad Boys. Mm hmm a couple of things but you know jennifer jason lee i mean i think that that was probably one of her first ones yeah yeah definitely B set off B her B career Cates. yeah yeah um jennifer j yeah jennifer jason lee it looks like it was one of her first i'm just looking at her imdb here uh yeah definitely set off her career she was in like tv series here and there but yeah i think this was like her first like big movie um right but uh but yeah who would have thought uh spicoli would be a two-time oscar winner you know that's yeah uh, <laughs> that's right ins it's insane to me um but apparently you know he's off of uh you know based off a real person probably exaggerated a little but yeah i think sean penn just kills it i mean he's well the crazy thing about that is that he's one of the funniest comedy film comedy characters of all time and he never did comedy again i know like right? what the <laughs> fuck sean stop taking yourself so seriously you're good at it 
<laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. I think they didn't they recently do when like COVID first started. I think they did like a a reading of this movie, like him. I know I like Shia LaBeouf was part of it. Oh, no shit. Um, really? Yeah. And uh, I think he, he reprised Spicoli. I, I, oh, that's I, awesome. I, it was a movie. I want to say it was this one. So if it's not this one, I apologize, folks. But check it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was it was a comedy thing. And I was like, wow, he's yeah, not just staring at the camera telling you to donate for this cause or, you know, which is fine. But right. you know, still, man, come on, laugh a little. <laughs> right, right. I know. Um, and then, yeah, it's obviously got we got Judge Reinhold, who's uh, you know, he, he's one of those who's like, eh, he can kind of pass for a, a high schooler, I guess. Yeah, yeah. he looks <laughs> a little old. Yeah, it's but, like watching Happy Days. Yeah, right, exactly. Uh, but, but but yeah, I mean, I, I like the uh, you know the subject matter. It's it touches. You know, it's it's not you know completely slapstick as as you would think. You know, I mean, you got you know Jennifer Jason Lee's character who ends up getting pregnant and you know having to have an abortion and everything. That's like. You know, you wouldn't think that would just be like squeezed in this movie, you know, when you're when you just look yeah, at it her, on the surface. And her having sex in the dugout with that older guy, it was just like Yeah. I mean, what was what was so intense about that was that the the movie was pretty lighthearted until yeah. that moment. And then you go, you're seeing these kids who you're invested in and you're they're innocent you're invested in their innocence. And then you see a girl's innocence just gone just like that and it's yeah. really that's what really makes it feel like the coming of age movie that makes it stay with you absolutely and yeah i mean yeah it just it just it just happens and then you know the the next day she's you know totally fine just it, it hurt you know but yeah, uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's just you know they just go go about their day and and what's interesting about this too is that you know typically these movies you know like I, american pie comes to mind you know it's it's usually the men who are you know seeking the the sex but right. uh, in this it, it's the it's you know the it's the girls you know it's, yeah 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 uh, right uh, it's you know, it's something you 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 wouldn't think to see, especially in an early '80s movie. Um, uh, you know, with with uh, Jennifer Jason Lee's character, Stacy Stacy Hamilton. Yeah, right. Um, and then <laughs> got the great uh, Ray uh, Walston as Mister Hand. Oh my uh, God! Yeah, <laughs> he was he was amazing. You know, he was like, you know, there was him, there was Ben Stein. In Ferris Bueller's Day Off, <laughs> yeah. and it was Mr. Hand as like the two greatest teacher characters of all time. Absolutely, yeah, and uh, yeah, he just, you know, uh, and then oh, and then what's the, what's the guy from uh, uh, Breakfast Club? Um, I don't, know, I forget his name, but yeah, you got that guy too. You know, the '80s. Oh yeah, who was that? '80s in guys. Club? I know, I can't draw on a blank here, but uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, we'll 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 add it in later. Um, and then uh, there's that other guy, the guy that played uh, Damone. Was that his name? Ramon yeah, Mo or Damone? Mo like he, I don't remember ever seeing that guy again. I feel like that was his only movie. I know. Yeah, his his real name Robert Romanus. Uh, he was in Fame, the TV show Fame. Uh, a film in 1999 called Tychus, you know, Tychus, and um, The Runaways in 2010. So, yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> he, he didn't. Yeah, like uh, I've seen him pop up in episodes of things now and again. Right. It's never, it's never like a reg series regular. It's never like a big movie. It's, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so funny when you see movies like that where people break out and, um, and then there's the guy that's doing like autograph shows 20 years later. Right, exactly. Like, <laughs> we got someone from uh, Fast Times. Let's see who yeah. it is. It's like, oh, who's this? Right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you, you definitely don't see him anymore. But yeah, his character is definitely interesting. You know, scalping tickets. Everyone's, you know, always, you know, going, going to him for, you know, uh, tickets to concerts because that was you know obviously a big thing during this time is going to see these rock and roll shows and you got yeah. even F Forrest Whitaker who's in this asking for earth wind and fire tickets he's the you know the, the yeah and he's, he's trying to push 
he's trying to push cheap trick and he's like cheap trick man yeah. the dream police da 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 and nobody's buying nobody wants a cheap trick yeah it's like well, come on you got to sell better um, than that um, yeah um but yeah, I think it's like you seeing that cross section of yeah, like Forrest Whitaker, the the jock, you know, and then um, you know, I think seeing Damone uh, have sex with uh, Jennifer Jason Lee behind the other guy's back was also like really fucking hit you in the chest. It was like wow, that that really hurt. Yeah, and then to see that fight that they have in the locker afterwards, where. Right. Um, where you're seeing like the again the complexity of the character like he doesn't just give in in the locker room and apologize he like they, he ends up hitting him you know right. getting a yeah. fight yeah yeah exa exactly yeah it's not just a quick makeup like it's yeah no you're you're my enemy at this at this yeah. moment you know right. it's uh, right. yeah <laughs> um but yeah it's it's it, yeah it's it's crazy yeah cuz yeah he does you know end up showing up at uh, Jennifer Jason's Jason Lee's house but again that she's again it's the, it's the women who are who are going after it and you know the man's not going to say no you know he's just right <laughs> he's like all right um you know cuz he you can tell in that scene like he's hesitant about it you know you yeah. can give him you can give him that that. he is hesitant about it you know that's his boy you know he knows he has a crush on her but uh you know it's uh it's hard to hard to stop when you're <laughs> when, when when you're at that moment and uh yeah yeah it's uh yeah definitely uh relatable i i guess you could say um in some sense um yeah. did you do you know who's uh who's in this that doesn't have a line but it's their first movie um was it Nicolas Cage? That's right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. Yeah. He, he was credited as Nicholas Coppola back then. And Oh, uh, no it, shit. Yep. Yeah. Wow. What didn't uh didn't take on his stage name yet. So Yeah. 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 I was I was rewatching for the show and now I, I at first like got a glimpse of him i was like that's not nicholas cage is it and yeah then, and then yeah they show him again i'm like wow okay <laughs> he probably really was in high school at that then right yeah i mean probably uh yeah, yeah. i mean it's uh he was definitely one of the more believable ones yeah. uh and then uh well Eric anthony edwards looked super young also yeah that's true yeah he definitely fit the part um uh, Eric Stoltz is in this. Yeah, there's just so many, uh, so many people in this. Um, yeah. But uh, but yeah, no, great, great uh, coming coming of age tale. And then obviously, you know, uh, the Linda character, the famous pool scene. I mean, that's <laughs> dude. If you did not pleasure yourself to Phoebe Cates getting out of that, getting out of that pool with that Cars song, like every time I hear that Cars song on the on the radio it like almost gives me an erection that, <laughs> it was just it was so quick it was like two seconds topless right, right. But it was like this iconic masturbatory image <laughs> you know you in, in the 80s you had farrah fawcett poster you had the lonnie anderson poster yep um i guess pamela anderson yeah yeah that yeah, late eighties. Yeah, that was late eighties, and you had Phoebe Cates. I mean, that was just like, yeah, that's it. what was it about so sexy? I, I think it was, you know, the the water, you know, and the, yeah, it it's just again, it, it's just one of those scenes that's you know, uh, even if you haven't seen this movie, you know about this scene. You know, this is. <laughs> It's just part of American culture, you know. It's it's. She just stares right down the barrel of the camera. Yeah. Goes, Hi, Brad. <laughs> yep. As she un. Oh my God! Yeah. It's these perfect B cups. <laughs> these gorgeous little B cups, and you know, and also I think maybe the fact that you don't usually see high school girls' tits in movies. It right. It's almost like a taboo. Like you never actually saw the nudity. Right. Exactly, but you know, the again, they they're played by older actresses, so we're allowed to be, you know, still okay with it. So you know, we don't have to feel weird right. about it. 
because <laughs> uh, yeah, she didn't really uh, go on yeah, to right, do right, much. Right. Uh, she was in uh, Gremlins, um, Drop Dead Fred. You know about Drop Dead Fred? No, no. What's that? <laughs> it's just some silly like. Uh, it was in 1991. She has an imaginary friend as a kid, and then grows up, and he comes back. It's very just stupid and silly. But uh, uh, yeah, who's, who's I just looked actor? up Phoebe Cates. She was she was 18 when Fast Times at Ridgemont High was done. Okay, so we're good. We're we're when it was done. She okay. just made yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, just just made it. Yeah. Now I when think... she auditioned, she was seventeen. But <laughs> I wonder if during I wonder if you auditioned for uh, such a major moment as that topless scene, whether or not during the casting they asked to see you topless. I mean, I would, uh, or maybe because what just... if she had lopsided, <laughs> right? <with> yeah, it's <laughs> with those nipples that expand for like four inches. The areolas are just like barely pinker than the skin that right. wouldn't do it that wouldn't have done it yeah and you didn't have cgi back then you couldn't you know just just fix it you know right right <laughs> i mean you had cgi but you, you know it would have been really shoddy and, and noticeable yeah <laughs> you know yeah so yeah i mean yeah i would assume they would have had to have, have seen it you know before beforehand so you know i don't know yeah, maybe they had uh female casting directors that uh were there for that i, do, I don't know i don't know Greg. not anymore that shit doesn't uh, happen anymore <laughs> yep not so much not so much. <laughs> I love uh, I love how uh, Spicoli's driving Forrest Whitaker's car and, you know, with his brother and everything, and they crash it, and he's, <laughs> for, like, he's saying, oh, he's going to kill me, you know, and all this, and, and Spicoli's like, my dad's a TV repairman. He's got so repairman. many tools. He's got, an awesome, <laughs> he's got an awesome set of tools. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, yeah yeah that'll fix a car my brother's gonna kill me my brother's gonna shit my brother's gonna kill me well which is it man is he gonna kill us or is he gonna shit both he's gonna shit then he's gonna kill me <laughs> oh my goodness yeah it's so brilliant yeah again like you said earlier i wish sean penn would would do stuff well i wish he would have i think it's too late now i mean he's you know he, he's well past uh those days of of comedy i don't even know is he doing movies anymore it doesn't doesn't really i don't know like de niro it. de niro didn't start doing well de niro didn't start doing comedies until he was in his 60s that's true yeah well, i guess there was midnight run and that was the only that was the only one I remember before he started doing Eat the Fockers and all those movies. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. So, you know, it's never never too late. You know, he's uh he's sixty right. now. Six Sean Penn's sixty one. So yeah, I mean, yeah, let's do it. Let's let's uh Plus let's everybody campaign. everybody that was ever in a everybody that was ever in a Zucker Brothers movie, they they were all serious actors until they got into their sixties. Yeah. And they all started doing comedy. This is true. This is true. And uh, Jennifer Jason Lee, she she ended up uh, getting nominated for an Oscar uh, in her later career for. Uh, she did. Yeah, for um, the Hateful Eight, the Tarantino film in uh 2016 oh, no yeah just nominated didn't win but uh yeah great great performance in that um but uh yeah it's it, it, it's it's crazy seeing these these uh young actors um but uh, yeah i love like again with that uh, car crash scene instead of you know fessing up to it or anything they use that as um that the rival football team destroyed it, you know, and uh, yeah. which was a brilliant plan. I mean, for Spicoli to think of that, it's, you know, yeah. not quite believable. But <laughs> and then like, again, the cinematography of that football game where he's yeah. destroying people like the cinematography. I don't know who shot it, but it was really, really well shot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was awesome. Like I loved watching that scene. It was just, you know, he's plowing through guys. Just yeah, it's, it reminded me a lot of Waterboy. Some of the shots, like him just jumping over the offensive line and everything. It right. Was <laughs> so great. Um, um, Matthew yeah. Leonetti. Was I wonder the where they actually shot it. I remember because I Venice. I think it might have been Venice High School. Oh, okay. Or Palisades. It was one of those two. I'm trying 
I'll look it up. <laughs> very, 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 Wikipedia very, has a very limited fast times. Yeah, on high entry. I, I know it, it, uh, it I didn't think have we need to add to it. Definitely. Uh, there's a fact right here for uh, on IMDb. For his masturbation scene, Judge Reinhold brought a large dildo to work with un unbeknownst to the rest of the cast. Phoebe Kate's look of horror and disgust is very real. <laughs> wow. Look at that. Ah, that's great. That's great. <laughs> Man, that is insane. Yeah, she was probably like, wait, wait what? <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> uh, but, and then... Uh, I tried my wife to know. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, Nicholas Cage lied about his age so that he could uh, get a bigger part, but the producers eventually found out that he was yeah, only 17. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, only 17. You're, you you were right. No shit, he's 17? Yep. Wow. Um, Trying Damn. to see, see if there's any more fun facts here. Yeah, that dildo one's uh, <laughs> that's brilliant. Number uh, rank number two on Entertainment Weekly's 50 best high school movies. Uh, I wonder what was number one. Number uh, two. I mean, I'd be Grease. Uh, yeah, that's true. I was thinking maybe Ferris or, Bueller. Or there was, um, or, or you know, no, you know what? For the critics, they probably went back to um, um. American, uh, what was the one set in the 50s? It all um, took place in one night. American Graffiti? No. Yeah, American Graffiti. Oh, oh yeah, I yeah, I bet yeah. they picked American Graffiti as number yeah, one. Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah, those critics, I tell you. That was another um, movie that had a lot of stars come out of it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was uh, one of Harrison Ford's first roles. Yeah. If not, if not the first, um, but, uh, but yeah, um, I'm just looking at more facts here anyway. Uh, so yeah, I mean, fast times, man, it's uh yeah, it's one you can constantly go back to and yeah, it's just so, uh, quotable and yeah, Spicoli, you know, he's one of the, one of the great, uh, comedy characters, uh, of all time, I'd say. I, lo <laughs> I lo <laughs> love what he's all of a sudden just like in in the in the class like he usually shows shirtless and then he's like in like that turtleneck with like the sweater and everything it's just like yeah yeah so, yeah, yeah. so out of place and the, right. the, the pizza man but comes I, <laughs> yeah yeah this is our time and this must be our pizza <laughs> it's right um yeah and the, and the scene where they go up at the uh, at the school dance and they kid that's certainly how i pictured my high school years or like i romanticized that they were like that they, they kind of were but that but we weren't living in california i can't i came to california i think the other thing that made me so enamored with this movie is my family came to la when i was about 12 we came up to visit and we stayed for like three weeks and we stayed with my father's friend and he had two daughters that were me and my brother's ages and they were friends with these guys who had long hair and smoked weed and they played guitar I remember they were playing hotel california on the acoustic guitar and they had a hot tub and we were eating avocados which i'd never tasted in my life and <laughs> and oranges that came off their tree and we went to yeah. the beach and, and i was just like this is the fucking coolest life I've ever seen. And, and then this movie just captured all of it because it actually kind of took place around the same time yeah. as, as I was there. <laughs> the what What is that green, luscious avocado? It looks so so tropical what is, what is that <laughs> yeah and the Man. and the father was a drunk my father's friend was a drunk and he used to yell at the daughters and they would make dinner and yeah. uh it uh and they'd make they, i remember they made mexican food we had ta hard shell tacos with avocados Ooh. and then we'd smoke weed in the in the back um they had this little back house and i remember uh kissing becky it was my first kiss oh and i was high it's like it's not it's never gonna get as good as this, this yeah is, and so at the my father had a possible job offer in, in LA and he wanted to move out there and I was like I'm out of it. Froze. There we go. I think we're good. One of us froze. 
Yeah. Um, it's probably me yeah. then if you're seeing me freeze. Um, uh, it's, so also my, it's also my broadcasting style is sometimes uh, because of my ADD, I just don't talk or move for 30 seconds and people think that the screen is frozen. <laughs> That's, <laughs> hey, you know, it's a good uh, good strategy now. Now you can just say, oh yeah, the screen was frozen or just yeah, right. go along with it and be like, no, I have ADD and, you know, I just don't like to talk yeah. sometimes. <laughs> Right. Well, you know, I, you know, I, the, again, that's what, that's why I edit, you know, that's what editing's for. I could never do a live show. I don't think that's just, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I guess if I had to, I would, but you know, I, I, the only time I've ever edited it is if I have a guest that says I shouldn't have bad mouth, you know, yeah. uh, Dennis, uh, whoever, like, then then I'll take it out. But otherwise, like, I like leaving in my fuck ups. I think people like to hear that stuff. I, I, yeah, I try to. Like, I like it to be more natural and everything. Like, it's just like you know, more natural conversation. I think I'm just overcritical of myself, so I I do that, and I think I rely too much on editing, so I like mess up knowing that I can edit it out. So like, I am not totally on my game. So you know, it's a it's a crutch. And I need to get rid of it. So no more yeah. editing from here on out. Boom. All right. Good. Good. Raw <laughs> the raw feed. Warts and all. That's right. <laughs> uh, was there anything else on Fast Times at Ridgemont High that uh, you wanted to mention? Um, let me think. I mean, I guess just the soundtrack was. It was like you know his movies always have amazing soundtracks. Obviously, almost famous. Tom Petty. I'm trying to think who else was in that, but like it, it just really fucking captured the eighties. Yeah. Um, they kept playing us. Uh, California. S- somebody's baby. I forget who sings that. Uh, oh, Jackson Brown. Jackson, yeah. It must, yeah. Be, it must yeah. be somebody's baby. Yep. It's like, like, yeah. I mean, you, you name the song and you can name the scene that it was happening in. Yep. Definitely. And yeah, it's, it's right. It, one of, one of the points is right before the statutory rape scene, which he didn't know he was committing statutory rape because she said she was 19, but, uh, that was that, the Jackson Brown song. That was the Jackson Brown song. That's right. So, you know, it's, uh, we'll always, I will always think of statutory rape now when I, uh, when I hear that song. So, right. uh, thank you. Cameron and also Crow. when he goes, uh, also when, when, and when rat is telling his friend about like on his date, He's helping him plan the date, and he's like, "And whenever possible, you want to play side two Led Zeppelin two. And yeah. then they cut to him in the car, and it's Cashmere. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh man! And well, it, that's another thing about the uh, that uh, uh, the character. Uh, De- well, Desmond? No, not uh, again. Why I edit? Uh, Damone, yeah. Um, usually characters like that, you know, they just talk a big game, act like they know what they're talking about, but you never really see them, you know, uh, do what they tell the other person to do. Um, right. But this this one's a little different, you know. He does end up with a girl, um, but uh, but then is you know scared right away because, well, first of all, he you know uh, went a little too quick on her. Um, yeah. Fin- yeah. Finished a little quick. And then, uh, yeah, they was avoiding her and then ends up finding out she's pregnant, doesn't pick her up or anything like. So, yeah, he definitely talks, talks a big game. But, uh, yeah, doesn't uh, doesn't follow through. That's for sure. So, yeah. Yeah. But, um, I think it was everybody's uh, everybody's nightmare in high school was coming too soon, you know, yeah. and yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they they just, captured just in that, high, that just, the horror of that. Yeah, just I don't think just in high school though. I mean, you know, it, it's still you know, you know, I I still worry about it. You know, no, you do. <laughs> Even after three kids, you've proven <laughs> that you can get the job done. Well, yeah, but you know, still, you know, I like some, you know, pleasure for us both, but uh, you know. It's something I think about. It's like, eh, yeah, yeah. I don't, don't want to do it. <laughs> but the older I get, the oh, easier, you're one the of those new age guys that cares about her <laughs> pleasure as well. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, uh, who cares? But you know, I'm, you know, uh, you know, I want to be chivalrous. You know, <laughs> nah. I, yeah, right. Nah. It's it's whatever. You know, like you said, three kids. Well, 
we ain't going nowhere at this point. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, right. fast, fast times, man. Great, great film. I'm glad you, gr- glad you chose it. Um, when, uh, when, when can people hear your podcast? Where can they find you in social media and all that jazz? Um, well, the, um, Twitter account is at Greg Fitz show. And then Instagram, Instagram is kind of fun because I put out, I put out a, a new standup spell two minutes at a time this past year on my Instagram feed. So if you go to Greg Fitzsimmons, you can see a bunch of standup clips that I really like. And then, um, and then the podcasts are Fitz dog radio, childish and Sunday papers. Check them out. Check them out, people. Well, my friend, it's been great talking with you, and uh, yeah, hope you hope you enjoyed yourself. Hope I, uh, you know, I made you happy today. You made me very happy. I'm in a good mood, thinking about fast times for an hour, and uh, I'm actually maybe I'm going to watch it again tonight. Now I'm excited to watch it again. There you go. You're supposed to watch it before the show, but you know, it's all right. You know, it, you don't have to prepare. It's whatever. It's been... <laughs> now, I think I know this one pretty well. I don't think I needed yeah. to see it again. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I got you. I got you. It's my it's job. Like, I don't to need, watch it. I don't need to read. I don't need to read the Karma Sutra before I make love to my wife. I got all that shit in here. Ah, lucky you, man. Yeah, lucky you. Yeah. Uh, someday I'll get there. Someday I'll get there. But, uh, it's been great talking with you, man. All right, man. Thanks for reaching out. Well, there you have it, folks. Fast Times at Ridgemont High with Greg Fitzsimmons. Again, follow us on Twitter at BlockbusterCast, Instagram at Blockbuster Mentality, where you'll get all the updates on the show. Uh, be sure to te- check out the podcast, Gutting the Sacred Cow, as me and Dave were both guests on that show as we tore apart Ghostbusters. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> we're we going to get a lot of flack for that, for tearing apart such a beloved film. But hey, you know, sometimes you got to play dirty. You got to play dirty. So, But uh, that is it for me, folks. For Greg, I'm Ben. And as always, grab some popcorn, grab some snacks. We'll catch you guys at the movies. Yeah.